All right, here we're going to be explaining this pin on disc tribometer. This unit was built by Implant Sciences Corporation uh, for NASA for, for studying um, the coefficients of friction and the wear behaviors between materials and the integrity of thin film lubricants. So it uses the, the pin on disc method for, for measuring for friction. So you have this mechanism here uh, which is a counterweighted rod which you can lift up and down and there is a hanging weight down here which applies force to your specimen so the specimen here we'll move this up out of the way the specimen here is this disc uh, and this whole stage rotates and here's the chuck that holds your specimen so you're checking and monitoring uh, the friction on this surface right here and you're doing that with with the pin or the there's a ball in there so here's other attachments you can put on there there are balls of varying diameters uh, there are some these small ones are missing the balls but there's like I think that's the 3 8 ball And then so this gets engaged, you lift this up almost like a record player and you want to thread it through this hole here and this device here is the load cell. So as this, as the specimen is spinning and the weight is applying force downward, the moment that is created is pulling on this rod which is pulling on the load cell which is giving you a reading. Um, this also has the ability to apply heat to the specimen so that's what what this is here it is not mounted right now but it is a heater uh, and you mount that underneath of the chuck assembly and then there's a temperature controller on the front where you can control the temperature of the test and then you can see that the whole box is a stainless steel vacuum vessel. So you can do all of this testing under vacuum. So you can lower the lid and here are the vacuum flanges and you can look in there. All right, so you can see some of the controls here. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. The heat is controlled with this Honeywell temperature controller. Here is the main vacuum valve. This operates a big gate valve which will uh, separate the vacuum pumps from the actual chamber. Uh, the center section here is the the tribometer section. So here's the rotation count. When you kick this on, it'll just count how many revolutions. And you have a preset right here that you can preset how many revolutions you want and it'll automatically turn off. The friction limit will, will alarm you when it reaches uh, whatever you have set here. Uh, the center section here, this is the RPM. It's just a pot that you turn up and down. And this selector knob here has three positions uh, in the middle. Set radius will just spin the stage normally. If you turn it to decrease, it will actually move the whole stage to the left to change the radius for a larger specimen. And then increase, it moves it to the right. Here's the actual, the readout, the data readout um, of which is a multi-purpose gauge. So right now it's set for force in grams and that gives you the reading of the load cell and then the friction, the friction is, I believe that is the actual calculated friction considering the weight you have on there. So we just happen to have a 147 gram hanging weight so we set that to 147 grams 
and it will be calculating the friction here. Uh, you can then turn it to RPM, the monitor to RPM, and the radius, and then calibrate. Uh, down below is the vacuum, all the vacuum controls. So this unit uses a, a roughing pump, a mechanical pump, and then also a, a diffusion pump. So we'll just go ahead and operate the turbometer section. Um, it's pretty simple to use. We'll just set this to RPM. So we want to lower that, oh, I think it's already lowered down. The arm is already lowered down onto the, the specimen. So then we'll go ahead and turn it on. So now it's rotating at 117 RPM. And there you see it, the the ball is engaged against the surface of the specimen. And it's actually pulling on the load cell a little bit. And we can see that reading down here with the force. And there's the RPM counting here. And there's the coefficient of friction. So it's a pretty neat unit. It's built extremely well. Um, as far as we can tell, everything we've tested works, works well. It does not currently have a roughing pump in it, uh, but that's a very simple pump to get. Here's one of the covers off. And then, so we do have two manuals for it, which explain the operation. Um, and originally, it had a data acquisition computer, but, you know, this thing was made in the late 90s, I believe, so that computer is long gone, and any acquisition can be added um, a more a more modern system could be added but all the hardware here is in good condition and could be supplemented with some newer software or it could just be used the way it is uh, just by using the panel meters on the front here